we're going to use the Vernier Advanced Chemistry Protocol. This is 16A in that book. Once you've done that conductivity titration, this will give you an idea of how to analyze it and how to think about what's happening on the ionic level. And we're going to assume here, although you can do it any way you want, that five drops of maybe one molar hydrochloric acid are added to a volume of distilled water with the conductivity probe inside the water and that sodium hydroxide is drop by drop added the sodium hydroxide being the same molarity one drop of NaOH will neutralize one drop of HCl and we measure the conductivity as a function of the number of drops of NaOH we're going to do a kind of a mathematical titration here that will parallel what you may have done in the lab this is the type of curve that we typically get when we do such a titration. The conductivity goes down as the sodium hydroxide is added, and then after a certain point it begins to go up, and they very much look like two straight lines. So we can add best fit lines to the two halves of the titration curve, either directly with Logger Pro or indirectly with a spreadsheet program. Now the reaction, and we're not doing the net ionic equation, we're doing the full ionic equation here. We see hydrogen and chloride ions in solution reacting with sodium hydroxide, which of course also breaks up 100% in water. The hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions will merge to form water molecules, leaving the sodium and chloride spectator ions behind. What was initially in the beaker or flask would be the hydrogen ions and the chloride ions only. In the end, we have water, of course, taking the hydrogen and hydroxide out, and we have sodium and chloride ions left at the end. So we have the same number of ions uh, here at the beginning and at the end, unless, of course, we've added excess. Now what's happening is, as each hydroxide ion is added, it's reacting with a hydrogen ion. Columbic attraction brings them together rapidly to form water. This takes the hydrogen ion out of the conductivity stream and leaves sodium ions in the conductivity stream. And you can see the merging of the hydrogen and hydroxide ions in this slide. So let's think of one pair of hydrogen and chloride ions as having a conductivity of one. And let's start with five pairs of ions. Let's say we've got one per drop that we're adding. So we've got five chlorides and five hydrogen ions initially. This is, of course, just a kind of a model to make things a little easier to think about. When we introduce one drop of sodium hydroxide, as you can see, we're getting one pair of ions. The hydroxide immediately neutralizes a hydrogen ion, leaving the sodium ion behind. We have exchanged the hydrogen ion for sodium ions. We change the hydrogen ions to water by reacting it with hydroxide ions, and we've substituted the bulkier sodium ion for the very, very small hydrogen ion, all surrounded by water you can look up the difference in molar mass between the two ions and C. The big sodium ion will move more slowly than the tiny hydrogen ion did. Therefore, the conductivity drops. The process continues drop by drop until, by adding five sodium hydroxide drops, we neutralize all the hydrogen ions and turn it into water. Now we've got, of course, sodium ions in place. The next drop of sodium hydroxide has no more hydrogen ions to react with, so it introduces two new ions, the sodium 
and the hydroxide ions that are not neutralized and we would expect and we see that the conductivity rises dramatically after the equivalence point. The equivalence point was that point at which all the hydrogen ions have been neutralized by sodium hydroxide and there is no excess sodium hydroxide. By adding another drop of sodium hydroxide we have excess sodium hydroxide ions in the solution. This continues as we add each new drop of sodium hydroxide and the conductivity then goes up with each drop giving us this conductivity curve. As you see as we neutralize the hydrogen ions the conductivity dropped because we were replacing hydrogen ions with the big sodium ions and then after we neutralized all of the hydrogen ions the sodium hydroxide was in excess and so the conductivity went up quite linearly. The equivalence point is the volume of sodium hydroxide that nat exactly neutralizes the acid and that is the low point on the curve which here is not going to correspond with any particular drop added but is between four and five drops of the added sodium hydroxide. We know that if we have two lines like this and we have the equation of the two lines we can algebraically solve for the volume here at this low point at this intersection point. We're not going to do that in this slide series we'll do that at another slide series. But you can see what's happening now on the ionic level as we're neutralizing the hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide.